Okay, so this is going to be a run through of L Brands uh, 10K uh, for the fiscal year ended uh, in uh, for 2019. So L Brands, for those of you that don't know, is the parent company for Victoria's Secret and Bath and Body Works. Um, they operate here. They mention uh, they operate in the highly competitive specialty retail business, founded in Columbus, Ohio. Um, they sell in the U.S., Canada, the U.K., Ireland, and Greater China. Greater China being China and Hong Kong. Um, through websites, international franchise, license, and wholesale partners. Um, and they mention here immediately something very important. Um, on February 20th of this year, 2020, the company and Sycamore... Um, Partners Management entered into a transaction agreement pursuant to which um, they'll transfer certain assets and liabilities relating to Victoria's Secret and Pink Brands to their newly formed subsidiary Victoria's Secret Hold Co. and sell 55% majority uh, interest of the equity interest of Victoria's Secret Hold Co. to Sycamore. After taking into account certain debt, Sycamore will purchase the 55% interest for approximately $525 million, and the company, uh, L Brands, will retain a 45% interest in Victoria's Secret to enable their shareholders to participate in the upside potential of the business. And they intended to use $525 million alongside $500 million of excess balance sheet cash to reduce debt. So they wanted to, they, they wanted to use, at this time, uh, $1.025 billion towards reducing debt from uh, selling the Victoria's Secret brand and uh, a chunk of the Victoria's Secret and pink brands to um, to reduce debt and try to get a, a business drag off of um, their books. Uh, as you'll see later on in this video, uh, Victoria's Secret has been a drag on sales and uh, overall financial performance. Uh, Bath and Body Works is actually seems to be holding the company up in, in very substantial ways, as I'll, I will show you uh, during this video. Bath and Body Works, they sell products under the Bath and Body Works White Barn, uh, Bigelow, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, and other brand names. Um, and I mean, we know what they do, hopefully, uh, leading specialty body care, home fragrance products, soaps and sanitizers. Um, they sell Bath and Body Works at more than 1,735 company-owned stores and locations, and that's across the North America, U.S., and Canada. Um, Bath and Body Works has more than 275 stores in more than 30 other countries operating under franchise, license, and wholesale arrangements. Now, Victoria's Secret, including Pink, is a specialty retailer of women's intimate and other apparel with fashion-inspired collections of prestige fragrances, 1,180 company-owned stores. Um, and 440 stores in 70 countries operating under franchise, license, and wholesale arrangements. Okay, so we know what they do, and they have a large footprint. Uh, and here they mentioned divestitures and closures. Last year, they completed the sale of the La Senza business to Regent LP, a global private equity firm. Um, and they uh, also closed all of their Henry, uh, this looks French, so Henri Vendel, I don't know, I'm never going to try to pronounce French again, um, stores in the e-commerce website. Um, and they. this doesn't affect uh, the, the, the Vendel, uh, that's what I'm going to call it, the Vendel um, closures do not affect the um, financial performance of the company in a material fashion in this 10K. Uh, but it is still good to know that this is the case, that they've had some failed investments in the past, and they're uh, trying to move past it. Now here, they mentioned their uh, company-owned retail operations for each brand. You can see here Bath & Body Works and Victoria's Secret in the U.S. are the largest ones. After that, it's Bath & Body Works Canada as the largest uh, uh, store footprint that they have. They're primarily in North America. Um, they sold 130 um, 130 stores in 2018. They have not acquired any um, for the past three years. They closed 87 stores. Um, so they're they're actively trimming and looking to cut down uh, bad and, and or underperforming stores as so they go with my guess, just looking at that. Um, franchise and license arrangements. Um, 
revenue recognized under franchise and license arrangements uh, generally consist of royalties are recognized upon sale of merchandise by franchise and license partners to retail customers and uh, revenue uh, under wholesale and sourcing arrangements is recognized at the time the title passes to the partner. Okay, so nothing, this isn't uh, complicated stuff. This just seems kind of like bread and butter specialty retail. This isn't a complicated franchise structure. Um, so a total of a growing number of 722 um, um, franchise um, agreements which is a growth rate of, they grew it by 7%, uh, a little over 7% um, since uh, 2019. So this seems to be a, a stronger arm for the company internationally. And maybe the way that they want to go in, uh, over in uh, international um, locations. Industry leading brands, what they do, Victoria's Secret, Pink Bath & Body Works, is just specialty retail, it's clothing, um, uh, bath and Body Works, uh, shower gels, lotions, aromatherapy, home fragrance, soaps and sanitizers, body care accessories, nothing fancy, nothing new, uh, nothing too complicated. Founded in 1963 um, and has been led uh, by the founder and uh, former CEO, Leslie Wexner. He stepped down. Um, he, as mentioned here, he will step down as CEO and chairman of the board to become chairman emeritus. So he's still maintaining a big figure in running the company, this is very important uh, in terms of corporate governance. So he's probably you know, he's probably the puppet master behind the scenes because I doubt that he's going to let his company just be run any which way that you know uh, the new CEO Andrew Meslow uh, would like. Um, he joined L Brands uh, in two thousand three, so he's been with the company almost twenty years now um, and has a long pedigree of. Uh, retail experience. Um, so I imagine him to be, you know, competent of the craft and so on and so forth. But that Mr. Wexner is still on the board um, should very well be mentioned that he's probably controlling things behind the scenes. I highly doubt that he's going to let his company be run, you know, his, his baby be run any which way that you know, uh, the board might want to run it now that he's not CEO. Merchandise vendors moving down. Um, they have 340 vendors uh, around the world. No vendor greater than 10% of their merchandise purchases. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, you don't want it to be too concentrated anyway. Um, most of their merchandise is shipped to their distribution centers in the Columbus, Ohio area. Okay. Um, working capital. They fund their business operations through a combination of available cash and equivalents and cash flows from generated from operations and also credit facilities. Uh, that's going to come uh, a big time uh, for this year. Um, as they went into COVID. Uh, their operations are seasonal in nature, spring the first and second quarters and fall the third and fourth quarters, the fourth quarter, the holiday season, Christmas time, um, and Thanksgiving going into the new year are about 33% of their net sales and has been for the past three years. And it's their most profitable quarter. Cash requirements are highest in the third quarter. Their inventories build in advance of the holiday season. Okay, that's, that's pretty wrote for uh, the industry. Okay, nothing too surprising there. We're going into Black Friday. Um, so that's uh, something that definitely needs to be kept in mind, um, that that's going to be the case. You're going to see inventory bloat. It's going to bloat their asset values. Um, or the total asset section of their balance sheet is just to keep in mind that that is the case. They do that deliberately. Um, nothing necessarily uh, bad with doing that. Uh, competition, of course, is a highly competitive uh, industry. And... Uh, Associate relations, almost 100,000 employees. They don't mention that their employee relations are good. Um, definitely have noticed that as I continue to read more 10Ks, I look for that. Um, we consider employee relations to be good or excellent or anything like that. That's not the case here. Uh, recent developments, obviously, once again, Mr. Wexner stepping down, Andrew Meslow becoming CEO of L Brands. He was the CEO of Bath & Body Works. Sarah E. Nash, a member of the board, will be appointed chair of the board effective upon the closing. Um, company response to coronavirus. Um, they drew down $950 million from their secured revolving credit facility, leaving another $22 million just in case they need it. Um, the next day after doing that, they temporarily closed all of their stores. All of them. And uh, they continued to pay associates, um, to give associates pay and benefits through April 4th, 2020, one week longer than originally announced. Uh, I like that. 
company looking out for their employees to the best of their abilities. Um, and the governance following after that, they suspended their cash dividend immediately. Um, ex- uh, a substantial reduction in CapEx and, op- and OpEx. Um, an ongoing reduction in forward inventory receipts. Um, Temporarily reducing base comfort by twenty percent for uh, their the uh, executive leadership, and here they mentioned the dangerous thing: they have more than two billion in cash, nine hundred fifty million borrowed, a debt to consolidated EBITDA covenant, and that may be breached uh, ending May second, two thousand twenty. And the way that their covenants are structured, um, their uh, their lenders would have the right to accelerate their secured revolving facility indebtedness. They have to pay it almost whenever the, the, the lenders demand and they demand cash collateral in respect of the letters of credit issued there under and terminate the funding commitments available there under. So they could get the cash immediately and they can by immediately, they mean five minutes from now. So in this case, it could be a very dangerous thing if they were to have breached it. They did not. Um, so it's a, uh, they got pretty close and it's a very ugly thing when a company uh, gets into a bad spot with their lenders and is on the precipice of a, of a closing off funding um, to them. Nobody wants to deal with a lender that um, is untrustworthy. So uh, thankfully they did not breach their debt to consolidated EBITDA covenant, but they said that we're getting close to it. And that is something that you need to know. Moving down the risk factor section. Nothing really crazy here, quite honestly. They mentioned Brexit um, at the time. Um, and this was a, and probably still is, a big risk factor because they have UK operations, net sales, operating income, cash and inventory levels fluctuate on a seasonal basis. Nothing too crazy. Nothing um, too wild. They have massive properties in Columbus, Ohio. Um, uh, obviously, New York, of course, Kettering, Ohio, Hong Kong, mainland China, Canada, and various international locations. They lease offices in uh, Montreal and Toronto. Um, leases for uh, their U.S. businesses have an initial commitment of 10 years, and they expire uh, between 2020 and 2033. This has probably changed a good bit because of COVID, and uh, they've probably been negoti- renegotiating lease structures and lease payments, minimum lease payments, um, to benefit them, uh, to the mutual satisfaction of both parties, I, I imagine. Um, scrolling on down, some of the more fascinating things that I do want to talk about here. Um, this year was, or this past fiscal year, I should say, was hard. The $720 million impairment and a $253 million impairment to their long-lived store assets for Victoria's Secret. So they, you can just add these together. To get the total, they had to write down $973 million related to Victoria's Secret. Um, it's not a pretty sight uh, for them to um, have to do that, but these are non-cash impairments, so you add it back to uh, operating income, of course, but you still have to recognize that the goodwill um, for the business um, it, it, it is showing decay. People don't seem to want to buy Victoria's Secret products. So... What I will show, if I, if I can actually find Goodwill here, it's not here. Okay, I'll move on from that. I'll show it a little bit later. Uh, Goodwill was a big percentage of total assets, well over almost 20%. If it's over 15% of total assets, I get a little leery, um, mainly because that means a Goodwill write-down is going to be imminent. Um, and, and in the case of one of my holdings uh, for Tapestry, uh, as I am a shareholder, disclaimer, um, goodwill is actually 16% of total assets as of the most recently finished quarter. So I'm looking at that now and seeing what Victoria's Secret had to do, um, L Brands had to do, write down their goodwill because it was over, it was almost 20% of their total assets. I have to keep that in mind that other companies might be doing it too, one close to that various percentage, and they're just holding out for the last minute possible to write it down. In 2019, $30 million loss with the early extinguishment of debt as well. Um, They're actively looking to pay down debt as much as possible. They've been making investments in an Easton, this uh, uh, community called Easton. Um, It's apparently in Ohio. I've never heard of it. I've never been to Ohio. So I I don't know what this is necessarily. So what I do, 
make it simple, quick, easy, trying to figure out Easton if this will behave and comply. And they received 20 million in gains on distribution from Easton Investments. But you still have to figure out what Easton is. It's a planned community in Columbus, Ohio that integrates office, hotel, retail, residential, or recreational space. And they've invested a good bit into this. Uh, totaling 118 million as of February 1st, 2020. And what I want to point out before I move on to their uh, uh, second quarter 10Q are um, actually the growth rates for some of their direct channels. What I find interesting about this company um, is that their direct channels have been growing at very, very aggressive paces. Now, but that's been actually a complete benefit to them throughout COVID. And their Bath and Body Works direct business uh, with over 950 million in sales operating margin greater than 20% grew sales by 32% over last year. This is a massive boon for the company. This is incredible growth. Now the, here they also mentioned their comparable same store sales calculation which you want to keep this in mind because if they change the way that they calculate it, it's going to mess with um, the way that the company is projecting same store sales. You want to see how they calculated one year and see if it's consistent with how they're doing it the next year. Um, so in this case, they mention here that a store is typically included in the calculation of comparable sales when it's been open 12 months or more and it hasn't had a change in selling square footage of 20 percent or more uh, because covid happened this is going to be a very bad metric to use because the stores closed for a good period of time and may go back to closing again if covid um does not um uh, come under control I mentioned here for 2019, net sales for Victoria's Secret decreased 570 million. Comp sales decreased 7%. Comparable store sales, 9%. Uh, the lingerie comparable sales were down in the high single digit range, um, primarily due to declines in bras and apparel. Um, Bath and Body Works net sales increased an incredible amount. Comp sales increased 10%. Comparable store sales, 5%. Um, they're seeing an incredible amount of growth more in Bath and Body Works than they are in Victoria's Secret. Uh, and they mentioned here gross profit um, uh, decreased to $4.45 billion. Their gross margin decreased to 34.5% from 37%. Um, they, have, they, they enjoy rather consistently high gross margins in excess of 30%. Um, but it's been falling a little bit because Victoria's Secret has been a drag. No matter which way you you handle it, um, the, uh, Victoria's Secret has been a drag on the company. And they've been trying to get rid of it. But as you will see in their most recent, um, uh, excuse me, in their second quarter, uh, 10Q, um, they mentioned here that they can't get rid of Victoria's Secret um, because as it says in their second quarter at 10Q, uh, the company and Sycamore Partners actually mutually agreed to terminate the transaction agreement. So they threw it out completely. So the company is stuck with Victoria's Secret for the next few years, at the very least. Now, the problem is that this has gotten so much uglier uh, with COVID at this time. Uh, they, they have maintained temporarily reducing salaries. They've cut a forecast to capex from 550 million to 250 million they reduced inventory receipts by 45 percent at victoria's secret and by 20 percent at bath and body works so they're they're betting on bath and body works carrying the company through they converted the revolving credit facility to an asset-backed loan facility and issued 1.25 billion in new debt um, they suspended most store and office rent payments during the temporary closures, and they're working with their landlords to figure something out, extending payment terms to vendors. So this is going to make the free cash flow look good because they're holding cash longer. They mentioned rent through from April through July was not paid or partially paid due to COVID-19 closures. The company is working with their landlords to make things work. Um, 
year to date, they've recognized 54 million of tax credits uh, at this time, uh, the second quarter, 10Q, uh, due to the CARES Act. So one time benefit and uh, you pull it out of EBIT or net income, uh, excuse me, you pull it out of net income respectively. Now, what I want to show are the growth rates for uh, the direct channels of Bath and Body Works and Victoria's Secret. This has been carrying the company through, and I was actually very surprised to see it myself um, while reading uh, this company, uh, this company's 10Q, um, to see how much people have been buying from them. This is their international arm, which is not doing so hot because of COVID and wasn't really doing that hot to begin with pre-COVID. Bath and Body Works for the second quarter of 2020 net sales increased to 1.197 billion. Comparable sales increased, you are reading that right, 123%. Comparable store sales increased 87%. Net sales increased because of their direct channel. Um, which increased, you were reading this correctly, 191% to $519 million. In both channels, sales were strong across all regions, driven by high demand for soaps and sanitizers and strong comparable sales performance and body care and home fragrance. Also, you kind of notice that they're leading this, the, the, the talk of their 10Q by putting Bath & Body Works first, Victoria's Secret underneath it. Because 191% growth in their direct channel sales is phenomenal, no matter which way you put it. COVID, no COVID, this is huge. For the second quarter, Victoria's Secret net sales dropped 628 million. Comparable sales increased 28%. Comparable store sales decreased when stores were open. You'll notice they say the same thing here. Net sales decreased primarily as a result of COVID store closures and store closures. Uh, stores were closed about 70% of the quarter, including the impact of the 250 stores they do plan to close. This was partially offset by an increase in Victoria's Secret direct channel sales, which increased 65% to 614 million. So people are still buying more as aggressively as they can at home um, for Bath and Body Works and Victoria's Secret. Now, what does this say for the long run? Well, the longer that we continue to stay at home and go into the holiday season, I don't see sales for Bath and Body Works or even Victoria's Secret slowing down. Um, I think people, as they stay home longer and as the pandemic rages on, they're going to want to lean on Bath and Body Works and Victoria's Secret because from a, I guess a cultural psych standpoint, this, people still want to feel good about themselves. They still want to feel good about their self, their health, their personal self care. Um, and Bath and Body Works and Victoria's Secret tend to try to market to that demographic. Um, now, can they maintain this? I think they can personally, I don't know. Um, but this, this is a pandemic play with specialty retail that I think is only going to play out with time. Um, the company seems to be managing um, their uh, their growth very well in these segments, and they seem to just be trying to keep their uh, trying to keep their heads down and, and stay working um, for the direct channels to continue on. They mention here um, they're achieving strong productivity and maintaining standard delivery times for their customers after experiencing delays earlier in the year. Um, they're they're committed to making sure that the direct channel is successful for Bath and Body Works and Victoria's Secret. I'm very interested to see where this goes for the company. Uh, this growth makes the company very attractive to me, um, but I, disclaimer, have no position and no intent to open a position long or short uh, in the next 72 hours. Um, this is just primarily for knowledge or research purposes. You are to do your own due diligence. Um, Anyway, um, thank you for watching. Um, if you made it this far, please like uh, the video, comment, uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to if you want to continue seeing more content like this. Uh, thank you for watching.